Eric Talley, of course, and the host of the show, uh, Boris Davis, across from me. Yes, sir. So let's go ahead and uh, run in, run right into it into into this interview. We have the uh, Steel High School coach, boys, Coach Lonnie Hubbard. Go ahead, Coach. Introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit Thank about you. you too. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Lonnie Hubbard. Uh, basically, got in this business in uh, 2001. January 2001 was my first job. I got that at uh, Woodlake Hills, which is uh, Judson Middle School. And it's, I got lucky, you know, halfway through the year, I graduated in 2000, you know, and then January 2001, I was lucky enough to get a job right there at Woodlake Hills. And uh, I wouldn't pass it up for nothing. You know, a lot of people go straight to high school and all that, man. I, but there's so many, so many things you learn when you're in the, the middle school, the junior high, because you, you have to teach them everything, you know, from, from how to put on pads and realize that that tailbone pad doesn't go in the front. They think it does. But it doesn't go in the front, you know, so it's a tailbone pad for a reason. But uh, little things like that that you really learn at the uh, at the middle school, you know, because you have to, you know, unfortunately, a lot of times when we get to high school, you know, we kind of assume, you know, that they already know this stuff. But, you know, it's a great thing to have that basis. So, no, it was a, it was a great time. I worked with a bunch of great people. Uh, Coach Baker, who's retired up in North Texas now, uh, he was awesome. You know, and I learned a whole lot from him, you know, from a lot of the discipline and how you handle the kids, you know, and it's a it's a who's who as far as I coached with there. When I first got there, there was, uh, geez, of course, Coach Baker, um, Coach Mendoza, who's now the uh, principal at Judson High School, uh, Coach Mulder, who was just at Columbus, but now is the head football coach at Lavernia, uh, Coach Sines, who y'all know, who's the uh, head coach and athletic director, athletic coordinator at uh, Steele, uh, Coach Danaher, who just retired. Uh, there's, there's a, it's, a, it's a who's who of, you know, as a, as coaches, and it was it was great to be part of that. Coach Sines and I were the young ones in in there, and we learned we learned a lot, you know, of what what to do, what not to do, you know. So it kind of it kind of groomed the both of us, you know. But uh, moved on from there in 2006, 2007, I, I ended up as a JV coach at Steel High School, and I uh, did that for about five years. And then in 2011, 2012, I was fortunate enough to uh, get the head job there, and uh, we've we've done decently. We've done this. It's been it's been it's a great place to be. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. So real quick, Coach, you said you took over the high school part in 2011. And and if I'm correct, so what, maybe – I know you went to the state tournament. Was it – is it 18, 19? <laughs> yeah, it, it's crazy, man. It's uh, It was a great situation, man. We took over 11, 12. We honestly uh, took over a team that was 6-27. Uh, and 27. You know, we won six games and lost 27 in uh, that previous year, that my last year as a JV coach. And uh, we took over and uh, we got it. We, we got it. We snuck in the playoffs and beat uh, New Braunfels in a playing game. And uh, that, that game was at Clemens. And it was it was a great time. We ended up beating them at the buzzer to get into the playoffs. And then we got smoked in the first round by a good Churchill team. But it was great to just get in. You know, it was a great step for us. And then, uh, honestly, in 2012, 2013, that was our first, our first year at State. You know, that, that second year, we ended up going to state and uh, getting beat by South Grand Prairie because I swore I swore I shook hands with LeBron. They were huge. <laughs> so, no, it, it was a good experience for us. Guys going the right direction. So you, you're you very familiar with the, uh, the the state tournament. So you've been total times to the state tournament two or three times. I, I want to make sure I, I read it right. Three times. We went okay. uh, 13 and we went 16 and we went 19. Okay, so out of all three times of you going to state the state tournament, what do you take from all three visits? Because I know each time you go, we always take something different every to every game. So with that being said, what do you take from all three times you've been? You know what? In uh, 2013, you know we were we were not supposed to be there. You know we just got hot at the right time. We ended up uh, we ended up beating a really 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 good Corpus Christi Carroll team who was real good back then, and they. Uh, they had three guys that could just ball and they ended up, they won our district and beat us by like 30 points the last time that we played them. And then we saw them in the third round and uh, snuck up on them, you know, and surprised them. And, you know, we were able to beat the Valley teams and we ended up there versus South Grand Prairie and we were on a roll, you know, and uh, it just, it came to a stop because they were really good. And it was, it was, that was just a, that was just what we, you know, it's a great program builder for us. You know, it, it kind of, kind of put us on the map. You know, and that's that was our approach at that point in time. Of course, we wanted to win, 
you know, but deep down we're like, man, we just hope we can play with these guys. And they end up beating us by like 14, 15, 16 points, I think it was. But uh, that was 2013. 2016, wow, we were uh, we were good. We were good. We uh, we had a really good team. That's, you know, the Jaden Martinez, Gerald Liddell, those guys. We, we looked apart, you know, and we ended up playing uh, DeSoto in the uh, state semis. And, you know, we honestly, we were there. We were trying to win the whole thing because we thought we could. You know, nobody thought we could because, you know, usually when teams from San Antonio come up, you know, uh, they, they expect us just to bow out. And that was part of our plan, too. We're tired of uh, tired of that thought process, you know, where the Region 4 team is just the Region 4 team, and they're going to lose to one of those teams in the semifinals. So we wanted to change that because, you know, at times it, it seemed like it had been easy, you know, and we, we were basically trying to change that, too. And we, we did, even though we lost. Uh, we lost in overtime to uh, DeSoto that year. And it, it was a really good game. Uh, we thought we had a we thought we had a chance. I mean, we were there. We held them at the end, you know, to put it in overtime. Uh, started off overtime, you know, missed a layup at the very beginning, which might have might have made the difference. But uh, you know, we we ran into that cat named Bolden that went to Duke University the following year, and man, we just we just didn't have an answer for him in the paint. I swear he had 15 dunks on us. He was just that big and strong. You know, we put Gerald Liddell. We put Antoine Cox Wesley on him as well, who's in NFL now, but uh, we just, we had no answer for that guy, you know, so they ended up beating us and then they went on and won state uh, against Atascacita and they, they hammered them pretty good. So we really felt like we were the second best team in the state at that time, but uh, that was great, you know, and then uh, in 2019, same type thing. We, uh, we thought we had some, some talent. We weren't as big, but we played really well and uh, we ended up losing. Uh, we had a 13 point lead in the uh, third quarter. And then the wheels fell off. Klein Force, you know, kind of they, to their credit, you know, they started playing a, a lot better and they're bringing some more intensity and uh, they ended up beating us. But uh, as far as the experiences, I mean, it's it's now it's, you know, past that point of, OK, we know what it feels like, you know, so now let's learn from it. Now, when we go, you know, hopefully, you know, we have knock on wood, we have more chances, but uh, we're, we're there to win it. You know, it's not it's not a moral moral victory anymore you know we've been to the state semifinals three times you know we want to advance beyond that now yeah that's what's up coach uh i gotta bring a kind of a a, a bad note here because last year you didn't make it so i hate to bring that up but i gotta kind of yeah, touch no on doubt that. that's all right so, that's all right so, so what are we looking at as far as you know our difference of last year i know you had some injuries that's what caused you guys to uh a late in the, in the, on your run if i'm correct because eric brown went down and that kind of, you know, crippled you a little bit there with that. How are we looking this year? Because we're not going to talk about last year. Let's just move forward past that. You know, uh, in, in in reference to last year, I, I think that it's uh, – I really see in the in, – ever since our last game, you know, versus Smith and Valley to now, I think we have matured, you know. And uh, I think that's a, that's where we were, we were lacking last year was some maturity. We did some things that just uh, – that an immature team would do. You know, from decisions on the court, you know, to decisions off the court, you know, uh, I think we were just a little bit uh, immature. And I think we have. I think we've I think we've matured. I think we've learned how to win, you know, and I think we've uh, we've started making winning a habit, you know, as it should be. You know, so I think uh, the maturity level has has gotten better because a lot of those guys that we had last year were juniors, you know, and now they're seniors, you know. And, and when you get to that point, you know, it's like, man, this is my last year. This is this is the time. You know, backs against the wall. I'm not going to get another chance. So, a lot of those guys have matured. You know, and uh, I think that they're, I think they're hungry right now. You know, and we have some young talent that's as good as well. You know, so it's a, it's a good blend. You know, as long as I can put it all together, we'll be all right. All right. So with that being said, let me get some names. Who we, who we need to be looking out for? Who I need to be when I come there with my popcorn and I'm sitting there in the stands? Who, what guys I'm, I need to be going ahead and focusing on just a little bit more than others? Tell me. Come on. This. There's some guys out there. I mean, obviously, you know, the the Cameron Roper, you know, he's a great kid. You know, the guys, I know what I'm going to get from him. He plays extremely hard. You know, that guy's going to bring it all the time. He's a, he's a defensive monster. You know, I, I really thought, you know, in the last year, I'm like, man, this dude just reaches too much. But half the time, uh, Cam just has an eye for the ball, you know, and he might reach and, you know, a little too much, but he – he gets it a lot too. So uh, he does a real good job defensively. His offensive game's coming along. So uh, he's a guy that if we're going to go, he's going to have to go as well. 
you know, and then uh, you can go on. And then there's uh, Pablo Francis, you know, who, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's simply tough. I, I love the story of Pablo because uh, and he'll tell you the same thing. Pablo, didn't, a couple of years ago, didn't shoot the ball real well, you know, and he's the guy that uh, he, he'll, he, he's strong, my point guard. He's strong and can get to the hole and get by pretty much anybody, you know, and get up and finish, you know, uh, getting him to uh, draw two, as we say, and find one is, is part of the process. And I think he's getting better at that. But uh, the thing that Pablo is going to be a problem with this year is Pablo has uh, in the last year, Pablo started to shoot the ball really well. You know, he's a, uh, He's done what we asked him, you know, and worked the drills that we worked, and uh, he's shooting the ball a whole lot better than he did. So he's a he's a problem right now because it's, it's hard to stay in front of him. So you back off him, then he's going to pull that in your eyes. So that's going to be a problem, hopefully as well. But uh, he's going to be really good for us as well. Um, Javon Tolliver, you know, the uh, the junior, he's a uh, six five and strong. You know, he's the guy we expect to clean the glass for us, you know, and get the putbacks and do a lot of the dirty work. He, he, he does a great job of defending whoever we need him to defend. You know, it might be a six eight, six nine guy, but you know, Vaughn's Vaughn's up to the task. And you know, he's a, a great kid as well. So uh, you know, those three mainly. And then we have role players, you know, gonna have to play roles as well. You know, um, we got Jarek Arsenault, who's who's got crazy potential, you know. Uh if we can get him going in the right direction and then consistent, you know, uh he's he's gonna be a problem. Um there's uh, there's guys that uh Geez, even 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 coming off the bench, you know, we got guys, you know, uh, Jonah Johnson, who's probably probably at this point, you know, going to be huge for us, you know, very well. If we had to go today, he would start, and uh, we just got to get Jonah confident in in his shot. He's the guy that you know teams are going to be like, oh, shooter, 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 you know, and and he'll get hot from the corner, he'll get hot from the wing, and uh, the best thing about Jonah right now is he's learning to attack the basket as well. You know, so that's a that's a big thing for us. And then uh, role players off the bench, you know, and maybe even maybe even more than that, you know, who knows between now and when we get started. But uh, Landon Allison is going to be good for us. Ty, Ty Leak is going to be good. Ty Leak, um, De La Cruz is going to be good for us. Nick Fargus is going to be good for us. There's a there's a bunch of guys that, you know, we're going to we're, we're counting on to uh, to play some roles, you know, and uh, I can tell you and you've probably seen this in the past. It. It never fails. It seems like every year I have someone that comes in off the bench and simply plays more than a starter does because I'm finding whoever it is that's playing well that game, you know. So a lot of people put too much into starting games. You know, to me, it's a matter of finishing games because, you know, I'm going to find that guy. So uh, we have a bunch of guys that can really step up for us this year. Uh, watching you guys play, uh, there was a preseason game, or not even preseason, but I guess it was a fall little league thing that you guys participated in with the strength and motion deal over there at the icebreaker, the Gervin icebreaker, I believe, at the uh, George Gervin Center. And watching you guys play and coming out, you guys look really, really talented. You look really skilled. And one of the things that I, I fell in love and I like to see you guys play, you play, you play great defense. When your defense is on, you're going to be a tough team to beat. And, and I, I can hang my hat on that part. If all five of your guys play, I'm talking about the guys in the game, of course, you know, of course, you need everybody. But if those five guys in the, on the court can play that defense that you're teaching, and I seen you go over it, you guys are gonna be a tough, tough, tough team out of that uh, that district you're in right there. And um, so, with that being said, how are we looking as far as your fall league coming up, uh, going into your preseason? What are we looking at? What are we playing yeah. at, rather? Yeah, we're we're gonna be uh, September 13th, I believe. Yes, it is September 13th is our first fall league game we're playing in the uh the buta league you know and there's a there's a whole lot of good teams that that's that there's that rise up app that has all our games and everything on it but uh there's some really good teams in there we're going to see the buta johnson who's going to be really good this year we're going to see westlake who's always good you know san marcus is in there with us but uh we don't see them because they're in our district but uh it's 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 really good league for us we love going there because uh honestly man it's a great competition you know, and I've had a whole lot of success with uh, some of our guys getting some looks from some colleges there, you know, so that's, you know, that's what it's all about as well. So I, I get a lot more uh, coaches that come and uh, come and see them there, you know, and, you know, I, we all know that's what it's for. You know, we want to win a whole lot of games. And, and also, ultimately, we want to get some guys some college paid for. So that's why we end up going up there. And that and that drive is probably easier than going to San Antonio, to be honest. <laughs> I know, right? I know, right? 
I, I was gonna on the topic of the fall leagues and stuff. Um, you bring up an interesting point. So, what what factors do you consider when you're picking a fall league to play in? Because there's a, there's several different fall leagues or whatever you want to call those events going on. You know, um, by different different people that host them. So you, as a high school coach, and we know that you have your own um, game plan, which is we can't lump you into all the high school coaches because you're doing your own thing, what's best for you and your program and your players. But just for the people watching, like coming straight from a high school coach, what type of things do you consider when you're picking an event like a fall league to participate in? Because it's interesting that you mentioned the beautiful one. I'm guessing y'all are going to be playing at the uh, Syntex Fieldhouse or something probably which is a good good facility, not that far away, about an hour and a half, well, at least from where I'm at, about an hour and a half. But um, good facility and um, and things like that. But, uh, go, again, the question, like, what do you consider as a high school coach when you're picking those type of events for your players? Okay. Yeah, no, that's a great question. You know, uh, for us, and I can tell you, and that's what I said a little while ago, is one of the, one of the huge factors that uh, made me – end up going there for like this is probably like our third or fourth year going there is uh just the just the amount of college coaches that come you know i, I can tell you right now there's like there's like 10 and that's one of the big sales that he has is uh there's about 10 college coaches that have committed and they have a little area where they sit and everything it's, it's really 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 well organized you know from from the schedule you know, to having college coaches, you know, and it's always great whenever we see that pay off. You know, I, I've got a couple guys right now that are at a Shriner University, you know, and it all started, you know, basically from them going to watch them play, you know, while we were up in Buda, you know, and now he's getting even more college coaches in there. So I love the fact that uh, he's got some college coaches committed, you know, to his league, which is which is great, you know, because, again, you know, we try to do our best. You know, we may not be the best, but we try to do our best at getting our guys seen, you know, and, uh, you know, having that possibility of getting to the next level, you know. And on top of that, you know, it's really well when they work with you as far as substitution, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, basically, you know, the five in, five out all the time. And, and it, my whole goal, you know, of, of fall league is for us to get better, but I'm also evaluating talent. You know, uh, I'm not sure right now. I'm not positive. You know, I, I have in my in my fifth period athletics, there's JV and the varsity, and they're going to be part of the team, basically, you know, but in what capacity are some of those guys that are, are in varsity right now going to be JV guys? Some of those guys going to be JV, going to be varsity guys, you know, so we have our varsity and our JV in that league, you know, so we can evaluate even more, you know, uh, what kind of talent we have, you know, because right now you already know we can't do anything basketball wise you know before after school to like october 26th uh, oh wow i didn't know it was that far and that's that thank you for that answer by the way um and that you know that almost as as uh, leads to another question of is here we are right now today is september the 4th high school is already back in session um can you explain or help us understand a little bit like how you said you can't do anything basketball wise at the school until October 26th, which is like two months away from now, almost it seems like. So like, what what are you doing? And like, what kind of things can you guys do? Like, can you still like playing? Like, I, I don't, I mean, can you play in tournaments or fall leagues? Or like, what do you guys do between now and, and what are you allowed to do between now and like October the 26th to when you start like doing stuff, I guess, on campus? Okay, okay. Yeah, we, uh, you know, UIL is arranged it now. We can we can lift and do things like that before or after school. You know, but uh, other than other than that, you know, as far as getting a basketball out and playing, it's just our athletic period. You know, so we we can do all that we need to do every day in an hour. You know, but uh, other than that, we have we have open gyms, but that that can't be, you know, anything where where I'm out there instructing them, you know, to do something. We can just open the gym. Okay, y'all play type thing or or we could have you know the senior led type things you know but as far as an official you know coaching them directly uh, we can't do it just like in our leagues right now we can't coach them ourselves you know it's uh, right now we have a former player that's coaching them so it's great to have him because he knows how how we do things but uh we play we play in uh, several games i always say 
between uh, between our last game that we had during the season last year to when we play our first game, I think it's November twelfth. Yeah, we'll, we'll play like thirty games, and we'll we'll be in the uh, like we were just in the TABC thing, and that's the that's the one where UIL and C y'all y'all know that big one they had in Dallas, which was uh, which was great. I loved it. It's beneficial because we got to coach our kids, you know. So that's the only time that we get to coach our kids is when they when they put on that event, you know. All these other things was from our fall league, you know, to the Gassos, to the I thirty five challenges and things like that, and you know the showcases. We can't coach them, you know, but we'll get in them because it's it's a matter of us again you know, evaluating talent, you know, and, and getting better, getting used to playing with each other. So there's a lot of games that we'll play. We just can't play. We just can't coach them. That's all. And so, I mean, that's that's pretty interesting. So, like, if let's just say if, you know, your guys, if you were able to, like, get them together and y'all wanted to, between now and, I guess, October, like, go play in some weekend event or something, like, can you guys do that? We can. We can. We can. And it's a uh, – it's just it's just totally separated from the school, so it is us, you know. It is still high school, but uh, it can't be funded by the school funds, you know, because you know we have our own accounts and stuff like that. It can't be funded with the school money, you know, and basically we can't coach them, you know, and we can't get a bus and take them, you know. It, it's just it's totally separated from the school, you know. The parents just like when we went up to TABC, you know, it was different than when we go you know, tournaments like an Allen and stuff like that. Hey, we'll charter a bus and then we'll go, uh, we'll all stay together, you know, and we'll pay for the rooms and stuff like that, you know, when that happens. But uh, did like the one in TABC event, you know, that was all on them. You know, I, I, I bottled some rooms together for them, but that was them, their parents paying for them and all that. It was individual. So when we finished games and stuff like that, okay, hey, we'll see y'all tomorrow. There's no bed check or anything like that. Like when we're during the season when we're responsible basically for them. Nice. Well, that's uh, that's cool um, and good to know. And also, it makes I, I keep thinking about the um, you mentioned TABC, which I love their high school event. Like, I mean, number one, it's it's, you know, UIL stuff. And plus, you got great evaluators there and just great competition. Um, the TABC uh, high school showcase is like one of my favorite events um, of the year. But I also think I've seen some stuff recently for the San Antonio areas, a coaches association, like the SAA. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? And, and, and before that, I, I I'll say that I'd like to know what your involvement is, if you're a member of that and kind of what you guys do or what you aim to do. But also I want to see like those coaches associations start to like host more events because like, I think that would be just good, like, better for the players in the communities if you have um, some of these uh, associations. Like, TABC is already doing it. If the San Antonio Area's Coaches Association or something held an event or something like that with actual high school coaches, like, giving input, I think that would just be healthy for the game. So, I know it's kind of a loaded question, but um, I guess going back to the San Antonio Area's, San Antonio Area Association of Coaches, um, can you talk a little bit about, like, that? Right, right. Yeah, no, it's uh, I mean, it, it's not for lack of trying the uh, S triple A B C, you know, good grief. It's uh, it's been around and you probably wouldn't think that it's been around oof, probably. Gosh, I remember I went, I went to the first meeting. It's probably been about six, seven years. That's what, that's my guess. It's been around about that long. And it's just a matter of it, uh, it growing, you know. Uh, yes, I'm a member of it. Now, am I uh, part of the board or anything like that? I am not. Um, I know Art Gonzalez, you know, is the one I always get uh, emails from. That's the guy, that, you know, the, the legendary coach from the Highlands, you know, back in the day. And uh, he's a great guy. He's, he, he's kind of, you know, heading that up a bit, you know. And, uh, and there are, there are, uh, there's a clinic. There's, a, there's an all-star game at the end of the year, you know. So uh, they're trying, trying, trying to grow it, you know. So it is, you know, and it, it – draws from the San Antonio, New Braunfels area, even the, even the Valley area, you know, trying to make it, uh, it bigger because like you're saying, you know, when you have, you know, uh, coaches, you know, organizing like that, you know, kind of like, uh, like THSCA, I mean, THSCA is the biggest, you know, coaches organization in the United States, you know, and it's, so when you have numbers like that, you're able to get a lot more stuff done, you know? So it's, uh, it's, it's growing, 
you know, probably not growing at the uh, at the rate we would want it to grow, but uh, it's there. And, you know, with all star games, you know, and, and clinics and things like that. So uh, it's trying. It's right. We're, we're trying to, to grow it. Um, and then what about TABC? Because I know that's another uh, organization, TABC, Texas Association of Basketball Coaches. That's the one that we were talking about. It has a, that nice uh, high school showcase during the summer. Um, can you talk a little bit about your involvement with that association, if you're a member? And then a little bit further, like, why is it important to be a part of associations? Like, what do y'all do? Like, why do college coaches, I mean, not college, why do high school coaches join these associations? What do y'all talk about? What do y'all work on? Like, what's the point of them? Yeah, the TABC is is, is big. And in fact, uh, it's it's the organization you know, as far as basketball in the state of Texas, you know, you have the big, broad Texas High School Coach Association, but that's involving every sport. You know, TABC is the uh, big one for uh, for basketball, and uh, it's 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 good as well. You know, um, all star games. It's 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 more of a organizational tool. You know, um, I know. Uh, gosh, what is it? I just forgot his name. At uh, at Taft, he's the he's the representative lawson he's a representative around here you know as far as you know getting uh all-star teams you know and getting all-star players and and like you're saying the, the more you have uh, organizations like this where you can uh it's all about recognizing the kids you know so uh the tabc you have all-star games so we get to put in you know from our district you know however many kids and you know and, and get those kids recognized and you know and there's a uh, academic all state and all things like that any kind of way you can get kids recognized you know and uh i can really speak for the uh texas high school coach association because uh i was the advisory board chairman for basketball for like the last three years until this past year because i ran out of time you know as far as uh you only have a three-year allotment but uh as far as what these organizations really stand for i mean it's, it's decision making as well, you know, uh, like, you know, we would always talk about things like the shot clock, you know, and things like that decisions across the board, you know, so as a, and as, as a, as an advisory board member, you know, I had to get the feel of, you know, region eight, which is basically San Antonio and South, you know, the feel on how everybody thought of, Hey, for instance, like that, what do y'all think of the shot clock, you know, and then we voice our opinion and then you know, that's when things really, you know, get rolling in that situation. So it's a, it's good to have, you know, committees like this. That way everybody can be heard because, you know, as well as I, as an individual, you, you might be heard, but are they listening to you? Yet when you have a big number of people, you know, committees and things like that, it's a, it's a whole lot harder to ignore, you know, people that are just voicing their opinion and there's so many of them. So that's what uh, these committees and organizations uh, make it harder, you know, to, to ignore, you know, what you want. Yeah, I see the importance of that. Okay. Changing gears a little bit. I know when you first started, I believe still was a 5A school, if I'm correct? Yep. So with that being said, you're moving from 5A to 6A. What's the biggest difference? Because, you know, our platform, or well, at least for me, my platform of trying to do this is definitely give the love to the young, you know, to the smaller schools. And we've been doing a good job trying to do that and get those guys on here. But again, we got to, you know, bring bring love and show. And you guys are doing a great job out there, too, with the 6As and 5As. So with that being said, what's the biggest difference that you can probably talk about going from a 5A to a 6A? You know what? It's it's the uh... – Gosh, it's the it's the sheer number, you know. Uh, I can I can speak for some, you know, that uh, some teams are just you're they're just always going to be good, you know, because they to me they have no choice. They have so many numbers, you know, and so much to choose from. You know, I, I have all kinds of uh, respect for Judson because they're 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 big and they're not as big as they used to be. To be honest with you, you know, Coach Lopez does a great job. But uh, they just – it's every year in, year out, you know. People say, hey, who's going to be good news? I'll say Judson, you know, because I, I, they have sheer numbers, you know, and, and things like that. So that's a, that's a huge difference. Now, as far as uh, – shoot, I, you already know, and we saw some you – know, like Cole last year. Cole beat us, you know, and they're they're much smaller division than we are, you know, but, man, they've, they, they've got some talent, you know. And uh, so in, in basketball, it's easier, you know, to overcome you know, uh, us teams that have just, just 
sheer numbers and stuff like that because all you have to do is put five on the court, you know, and then have a few guys that can help them, you know. And uh, sometimes those five that sit there and ride it out, they're just that good and that good of condition. You can play with anybody, you know, like even even last year, year before, I'll put Cole up against whoever because they just they just had those guys. You know, other sports like a football, it's just overwhelming. You know, when you have those kind of numbers, you don't have you don't have six A programs playing with three A programs because they just can't. You know, but uh, in basketball, you know, you have a chance. You know, and that's why that's the way I that's that's my perspective all the time. I don't care who we're gonna play. You know, I, I think we can win. I'm not gonna go into a game saying, man, I don't think we can beat these guys. I've never said that. You know, and I'll never say that because there's, there's that's called coaching them up. You know, you have a chance because there's five. You know, you find the right guys and you play the right way, and then you have a chance. That brings me to my next question, and it was one we asked our guest uh, earlier, uh, Coach uh, Calgill. As far as the club basketball, the high school basketball ratio, what do you think is a good ratio to where is though a good time to say, okay, high, high school basketball is going to start from October to March, and then club ball goes into this. But we know there has to be a good ratio and the amount of respect and like all, you know, for one of the things that I always try to encourage is always club teams to always get, check in with the high school coaches. But what's a good ratio to say, okay, hey, uh, I know it's a 50-50, but what's a good way to kind of make things even across the, the board for the high school team and the club team? You know what? You know, to me, it's uh, we're, we're all here for the same reason, you know. And uh, I can tell you when I first started, you know, hearing all kinds of things and stuff like that. I was, I can just, I'm just being honest with you. I was like, man, AU is going to kill me, you know, that type of thing. You know, I was that guy, you know, but no, now, you know, as, as you evolve, you know, and there's a, there's like yourself, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that are, are in it for the right reason, you know, and, and they're doing the right things, you know, and they're simply, you know, trying to make kids better, you know, and, and that's, that's what it's all about, you know, and so to me, as long as, you know, that there's a there's a little bit of communication, you know, between, you know, the AAU coach and the high school coach, you know, then that's what it's all about, you know, because we're all here, you know, trying to get these kids better, trying to get them to the next level. You know, yes, of course, you know, there's some there's some high school coaches that, you know, that need to be better. You know, there's some AAU coaches that need to be better. You know, the guys that just uh, on both ends that just try to go out and get wins. You know, and and then it's not that's not yes, wins are great, you know, but wins are gonna happen when you're doing the right things. If you're doing the right things, wins are gonna happen, you know. So, you know, I, I I've got players now that I'm like, man, what in the world? You know, it's just like it's like having a six five guy and just letting him be a, a big, you know, all his life. And then all of a sudden now he's not a big more so. Now what does he do? I just I just can't stand when people are mishandled. You know, so that that's that's my big thing is as long as uh, there's communication, you know, and there everybody's in it for the right reasons, then I, there's it's all beneficial. You know, that's the way I look at it now. There are some, like I said, there's some great AAU coaches out there, you know, that are in it for the kids. You know, there's some great high school coaches out there that are in it for the kids. You know, but as long as that's a common denominator, I'm I'm happy either way. I. I want to just make a quick comment because something, you know, you made me think of something when you were saying, um, you know, sometimes kids being mishandled or something like that or groomed in the, in the, in the wrong way. And I, I see, I think I see where that's, that could come from is like your example, a six, five kid, maybe he's the biggest kid in his AAU program since he was in eighth grade, you know, or sixth grade, he's the biggest kid in his AAU program. So he's been told he's a post and all he does is sit in the paint, grab rebounds, kick it out, and just be a big post. He can't dribble, he can't shoot, he can't pass, he doesn't have court vision, but that AAU program needed a big, and all they want that 6'5 kid to do is just be big. But then that 6'5 kid goes to high school, you know, a legitimate 6A program, 5A program, playing with other athletes that are 6'5, 6'6, bigger than him, and, and then that kid who was the all-star for his AAU program is at a disadvantage because there's kids taller than him now that can dribble the ball. They can shoot the ball much better than him. Uh, they have court vision. Um, and I, I see what you're saying when you say they're just groomed the wrong way because 
if you play on a small scale AAU program and then like you're the top dog, like you you need to be able to um you basically have a better platform when you go to the high school level if you go to a decent school where you can be surrounded with other good athletes and you can be more of a well-rounded player. So I don't really have like a, I don't I don't really state that as a question, but it was just a good uh idea that you sparked when you said you as a high school coach when you get a, a kid who who's coming into your program and you're like oh man this kid has potential he's tall he's big he looks like he can be great and then you see him play and you're like what you've been doing your whole life right yeah yeah exactly i mean that to me that's that's that's, that's a crime I mean, it really is that's a crime for that to happen that way because you know again it falls down you know in that category of coaching to win games you know, and, and it's not coaching to make a kid better. You know, you're winning games and everybody might be happy. But, you know, in the end, you know, it's been a little bit detrimental, you know, to that kid who, you know, down the line is going to have to have more skill than he already has. You know, and, and uh, are you working on that? Yeah, and if you're not working on that, then, you know, that's just that's just not the right mindset. Let's change gears a little bit, coach. Let's talk about the help or the advice you would give a brand new coach coming out, going to coach maybe a middle school or first year high school, what coaching philosophy or advice can you give that coach? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a, you know, the first thing that comes up to me is, is uh, love the kids, you know, love the kids and, and understand what that means. You know, I, I love our kids, but they'll be the first one to tell you, man, man coach Hub got on me. Yes, and I'm going to get on you. I'm going to get on you, you know, but at the same time, you know, whether it be the end of that day or the next day, hey, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to talk to you. You know, it's not like I'm I'm done with you. I'm mad at you. You know, like I tell our guys all the time, you should worry if I stop getting on you, you know, because I'm getting on you because I know you can be better. You know, if I stop talking to you, then then you should worry, you know. So uh, to me, it's it's do right by the kids, you know, make yourself better. You know, I can tell you, this is funny. I can tell you that uh, when I first started, you know, I was like, man, I thought I knew a whole lot. I did. I thought I was good. You know, I got to, I got to steal. And that must've been like the second game. I ended up playing, uh, we were playing New Braunfels Canyon. And I think it was coach Miller. <laughs> oh my gosh. They came out in a matchup zone. I was like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so I had no clue, you know, so it's a, it's a matter of learning, you know, and, and learn every single day. If that means you have to buy a doggone stack of videos like I did back in the day, then that's what you do, you know, because, you know, not everybody's fortunate enough to start, you know, under under like a Charlie Boggess or something like that. You know, not everybody's that fortunate, you know, so if you have, do whatever you have to do to get better, you know, and that's 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 mentally, you know, and that's as far as basketball goes, you know, whatever it is, you know, and it's OK to ask questions. You know, I'll ask questions to this day. I'll, I'll learn from the kids, you know, so, hey, you got something new, something's working for you all. Hey, let me know. I'm all about getting better. You know, I'm not too proud to say, oh, man, this kid gave me that, you know, so no, that's OK, because it's making me better, you know, so. Don't don't go out, you know, and just try to solve the world's problems by yourself. You know, uh, have some people to lean on, you know, and, and try to learn something every single day. OK, here's another one. The fact that you had conversations with uh, likes of Baylor and UT uh, sending kids to both schools. How would you or what suggestions would you have for any high school coach just trying to build those relationships because again I know the players are bringing those guys to your school but what did you do to help promote that and to help kind of help you know guide those guys to making sure they look at your guy versus that next kid that might be playing in Westlake or up there in Duncanville you know and that's 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 one of the things that's a, that's a great question because you know like you said you know it's People from my guy from UCLA, you know, is still my friend to this day. You know, he's uh, at TCU now, but it's a matter of uh, it's it's a matter of selling your kid, you know, and not 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 lying, you know, but selling your kid and, and being honest, you know, and, and being personable with those people. You know, they uh, the coaches come in and, you know, I'll be the first one to sit over there and, and talk to him as practice goes on. And I'll tell you this, you know, as coaches, we can adjust. 
we can adjust. You know, I have a, I have a calendar that's already made. This is what we're going to be doing from now on until spring break, you know, but I'm sorry if, uh, if Baylor walks in, we're not lifting weights that day. <laughs> you know, they don't, they don't want to see that, you know, so you can always adjust to what it is. I even ask them at times, Hey, what do you want to see? And then most of the time they're like, Hey coach, do what you do, you know? So uh, no, it's and, and the, the best part about it. And I think I had more success, you know, with them is, is having conversations, you know, with them. I have assistant coaches, you know, I trust them. If I'm, if I have Baylor there, then Scott Drew standing right there in front of me, I'm not going to sit over there and just let him, you know, the whole time I'm going to sit there and talk to him. because I'm sure he has questions. So as, as he's there, I'm sitting there talking to him, you know, and, and it's a good thing to be, you know, personable with them. Not only do they, do they come there, you know, and like they like what they see with the kids, but they actually like having the conversation with you as well. You know, so I think that that helps, you know, whenever you're being a little bit personal with them, not just let them, you know, sit over there and just watch at times. That's interesting. I mean, and I mean, I'm sure that, um, you know, college coaches, I mean, I think they would reach out to you and say, you know, have a, a good relationship with you before they come to your school and stuff. But as I'm thinking about it, like if I was a college coach, just randomly somewhere like in Nebraska or, you know, some other place. And I'm like, I need to go find players. Uh, let me look at some six A's in San Antonio or that area. Um, do you have coaches that just like that you don't even know, but maybe they're from NAIA program or, you know, something like that in, in some other state and they just pop into your school because they're like, hey, steal six A school. They had good players in the past. We need players. Uh, let me just pop in there and see who's there because we need guys for our roster. Like, And I think that's, I guess, as you're kind of talking about that, when you think about the whole recruiting, um, just recruiting in general, like these these uh, members of the college coaching staffs that need to find players, their job is doing research and going out there and, you know, hitting, hitting the streets and hitting these schools and looking for players. Like there's actually work that's involved in, um, sometimes I, I don't know if, if players and families always see that. Like they always think that co college coaches just kind of sit back and everything kind of comes to them. But no, they gotta they gotta work and look and find players. So can you maybe talk a little bit just about a bit talk a little bit about how maybe co how it works when coaches come and watch you practice or how they reach out to you or just kind of how those relationships develop over time. No, you know, it, it's great, the, you know, the way the uh, the contacts, you know, sometimes I can get a, you know, random text message, you know, and, and I can tell you there's 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 people, you know, even even y'all at times, I'm sure. But uh, I've gotten so many messages like from Blues or Tucci, you know, who they'll call, you know, and then all of a sudden he'll let me know and all that. But, you know, coaches, coaches talk to each other. You know, the thing about it is I might have Baylor in there one day and they know that that kid's not quite as good, you know, to go to Baylor, but they'll contact someone else, you know, at a, at a D2, you know, and let them know, hey, you might want to come and see this guy, you know, and, and one of the big draws for us, you know, and that's why it's fortunate, you know, for us to be here at, uh, at Steel is uh, our girls program is really good, you know, so our girls for we, we've gotten looks because the coach was there and our athletics run, the girls go fourth period, we go fifth period. They might be there, you know, to watch one of the girls, but then they come and they see us and they'll be like, oh, geez, let me, I better tell these guys, you know, what, they better come over here to, you know, to check these guys out, you know? So there's, there's all kind of ways, you know, that uh, we get looks, you know, from uh, just random, you know, we're in the area, you know, to hearsay from a, from a, higher level or a lower level coach, you know, to the, to the girls program, basically promoting for us, you know, so there's, there's, it, it, it's great. And, you know, I wish there were more, you know, cause ultimately, you know, we'd love for every single one of our kids to, to get a look from somebody and have an opportunity. All right, coach, with that being said, anything else you want to let us know about your program, what to look out for, you told us who to look out for, but anything we need to kind of, you know, uh, check out because I'm definitely going to be at some of y'all practices if you don't mind. I'm going to pop in, pop in. But anything you want to kind of just let us know? Man, uh, you already know. You know, we are, we're, we're trying to get back on track. You know, we had, uh, we've had nine years in a row where we were, we we're really good, you know, and went to state three times. In the last couple of years, we haven't been, you know, that group, you know. So we're trying to get back on track. And I think, I think we're on the right track to do so. Um, I think the future is bright. You know, with that being said, I, our classes are, are, I'll be honest, our freshman class, you are, you know, our freshman classes is, is good. 
you know, and and they have a chance of being really, really, really good because they have some uh, they have some size that is, you know, almost unmatched by, you know, anyone that I know, of, you know, from six, two to six, three and then several of them, you know, so uh, I'm really high on them. You know, we're uh, we're up. Op- we're optimistic. You know, we are, I, I always am, you know, but uh, we're optimistic because, you know, I think our, our kids are believing. I think they're learning again to play the right way. And uh, I think we'll be fun to watch, you know, and you already nailed it in a way because uh, a, this, our shots may not be going in, but you better believe we're going to play defense. So that's, you know, we're going to let our, uh, our defense be our offense half the time. So, uh, you know, uh, we're looking forward to it. Well, Coach A, again, thank you again for allowing us to have this time with you. Uh, again, we look. I'm gonna look forward to it. Again, I'm gonna have my popcorn ready. Again, you're one of the schools. I'm, you know, the big schools. I'm gonna be watching. So, you best believe I'm gonna be out there. So, thank you. Thing. You got one more thing. Go ahead. Yeah, just um, so the the viewers know coming up for this season, they want to come watch you play. Where are you guys gonna be playing at? Do you play there at the high school? I know I've seen you guys play. Um, uh, at the high school, but like, where are you guys gonna be playing your home games at, and just kind of like, what general area or facilities are y'all gonna be playing in? Okay, okay, yeah, we play right there at Steel, you know, and we have two gyms, and the freshmen basically play in uh, the smaller gym and the main gym, JV Varsity, and usually when we get the district, you know, and basically our home games are most unless it's a Saturday or it's a uh, or it's a holiday, uh, we play at five o'clock for the uh, freshman A team, six fifteen for the freshman B team. Um, 5.30 for the JV and uh, 7 o'clock for the varsity. So that's 90% of the time, that's when we'll have our games, you know, at our place, you know. And uh, we're, uh, we're in three tournaments. We have uh, – we're in the Spurs tournament, which, is, which, is, which was really, really good last year. I really liked the job that they did. Uh, we're back in Seguin this year. And then, uh, then of course, we go to uh, the big one in Allen after Christmas. Nice. All right, Coach. We'll be we'll be looking out, and thank you again for giving giving us this time. And man, keep smiling, Coach. I'm telling you that that smile is contagious, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate yes, everything. Well, all right, Coach. Signing off. All right. Thank you.